Hi everyone, I'm Nikita and it took me six years to get from this to this. Throughout my game dev journey, I've tried completing seven different projects, but ended up abandoning all of them due to the lack of skill, scope creep, but mainly because I just wanted to make something big and was playing compromises with myself instead by working on simple roguelikes. But after countless prototypes, I realized that it's not going to work and went all in with making my dream game a real game. So please welcome Void. A first person with open world like levels action RPG on which I have been working for the past three years and which I'm really excited to share with you. Now in video games I value the most just a few things. Freedom of exploration, deep character customization and some good first person combat. And there are just not that many games that provide that. Elder Scrolls comes to mind and that it, so I went on a journey of making one myself. Voin is all about freely exploring intricately crafted world, slaying hundreds of monsters and bosses, building your character with various items and abilities, and do quests on your journey of defeating the evil that has plagued these sacred lands. Our hero, Lightning, is a being that embodies the power of lightning, when he was tasked with coming to this realm in an endeavor of stopping the necromancer that toyed with nature's laws, he found out that the armor that was built by an elemental mage for lightning to possess is a prison which he cannot escape. And not only that, the mage can now control lightning's will and command him to do whatever ill-wished things he wants him to do. But anyway, I think I'll do the baby steps with these devlogs, so today we'll focus on something specific, the hub area, which will act as a place of respite where the player will be able to manage and upgrade acquired items, level up and learn new abilities, trade or get new quests. So uh, the hub, behold, Amorect. <laughs> Built by an elemental mage in the middle of a frozen ocean, right at the top of the long dormant underwater volcano, now reawakened in a place where water, fire, earth and all other elements and aspects of them collide, allowing for greater connection to nature. The tower is built with obsidian, which was commanded to take the required shape using elemental magic which is the reason why there are a lot of weird shapes and fractal structures, because magic leaves an imprint of its nature on the things that it touches. So if you decide to command the obsidian into a certain form using magic, it will end up looking a little weird and out of this world. One of my passions is level design and level art specifically. I love exploring and designing these beautiful areas that just take your breath away and make you forget that you're playing a video game. One of the main inspirations for Voin's level design and just visually is Elden Ring because it's pretty much a master class in dark fantasy level art with its massive landscapes and structures, intricate layouts filled with interesting things to find and defeat. I just love hoarding screenshots from this game. Other inspirations are Lord of the Rings and Warcraft universes. 
which pretty much defined me as a person. Anyway, back to the hub. From the outside, the tower looks grim and menacing, and you would imagine that its interiors would also be gloomy and uninviting, but I didn't want that to be the case, so I decided to push further the idea of a tower that encapsulates different elements. I needed to have one room for the player to level up in, so uh, first of all, I thought about the element that kind of represents self-development more than others, and ended up with the Hall of Reflection, which I found to be pretty fun, because self-reflection has a different meaning from actual physical reflections, for example, but this room has both. Nature spirits of all the different elements can come to this place to reflect and rest, walking slowly through the starry waters and gaze into the infinite. While Lightning, our protagonist, can use the reflection portal in the center of this room to level up. As simple as that. Aside from leveling up, Lightning should also be able to cleanse any items and artifacts that he finds on his journeys. And I thought, what other element can be better at cleansing things than fire? And also the idea of having a lava room naturally loops to the initial lore bit that the whole tower was built on top of a volcano. For the actual cleansing mechanic, I initially thought about this huge lava rock that just smashes the anvil that you put your items on which was pretty much inspired by the forge from Astral Ascent. But I felt that it might be a little bit too copy-pasty, so I ended up with an equally huge bell that cleanses the items with its powerful resonating sound. It doesn't really connect with the whole fire theme though, so if you have any other ideas for that, let me know. Now, let's break it down. Before starting with actual level design and level art, I need to build a clear mental image of what I'm about to build. The whole idea of the hub was actually kickstarted by a single image which sparked the idea of a dark, menacing tower in the middle of the ocean. So I started with writing its lore, coming up with a name and story. It is a role-playing game after all. While writing in the lore, I usually assemble a reference board with at least a few images to help define the mood, the shapes, maybe the lighting that I will be going for. So the lore that I came up with kind of gives off Ice Crown or Isengard vibe with both being dark and spooky towers that act as a residence for some evil looking guys. Now, I don't follow the reference images exactly, their whole purpose is to just kickstart the creativity and maybe provide some specifics on things like how the lava is supposed to look or how the water is supposed to crash against the cliff, you know, things like that. After all that is done, the next exciting part begins, level design. Now, usually in the industry, the level design is all about gray boxing. It's all about assembling a functional level with simple shapes without using any final complex assets because in the beginning, it's important to quickly iterate on the sizes of structures, the routes that the player will take, the distances and all that. Now, I don't do that. I start with final assets right away because I have no time for playing with cubes. What am I, a four-year-old? Coming from Warcraft 3 and Skyrim modding, I'm used to using already existing assets instead of making my own. And I notice that these restrictions spark creativity a lot. So I just enjoy it this way. So yes, the final assets, how do I get them? Well, I'm a solo dev with limited lifespan, so I buy them on the marketplace. Then I pick specific meshes that I liked and modify them. Most times heavily and other times not so much, but my goal is to end up with a kit of quote unquote building blocks with which I then assemble bigger structures like towers, supports, whole tower layers, columns, walls and all that. I purposefully pick as few meshes as possible because it contributes to the game's performance. Having less unique textures and meshes allows for more aggressive auto-instancing, which is a huge part of making sure that your or someone else's computer doesn't explode. And also, 60 FPS in a first-person game with fast-paced combat would simply not be enough because the camera movement can be a lot more intense than in any third-person game. 
and the game features open world like levels which is pretty much the most challenging aspect when it comes to optimization so yeah fewer textures and meshes and the lighter they are the easier my life is all that also contributes to the game's simple and somewhat stylized visuals by the way one simple trick that all doctors hate and that i find to work really well with voin's visual style is Unreal's native tool for merging meshes together using approximation, which combines all selected meshes into one, simplifies it and merges all materials into one, which is super nice. nice. This method is probably not going to work for games with realistic graphics, but if your game is planned to look weird, which nowadays is called stylized, then that's a perfect way of making sure that it does indeed look weird. Alright, the hub is still in development and I currently work on a few other rooms and debate whether adding a few NPCs to converse with would be a good idea, knowing that it might end up being a lot of work. In fact, it will end up being a lot of work. But anyway, I think I'll wrap it up here. If you enjoyed the video, you can wishlist the game on Steam, by the way, which I will greatly appreciate. Let me know what you would like to see in the next devlog, and until then, take care, stay safe, goodbye.